Hi. So, uh, multi-language is a feature that WordPress has not integrated. And there have been discussion in the past if this feature should be included in core or not. And the decision has been that, no, it's plug-in territory. And since WordPress pretty much exists, there have been plugins to provide solution. As far as I remember, there have been three different approaches to bring multi-language feature to WordPress. Uh, regarding the post, which is the main content holder in WordPress, uh, the first approach has been to use one single post to contain different languages. So the post content is being split by using custom separators, I don't know, a string, a comment, something, and then each language is one after the other. The second approach is to use one post per language. So we have, for example, the English language, the Italian uh, in a post, the Italian language in another post, and then they are connected somehow. Finally, the third approach is one site per language. This requires multi-site. I don't know uh, if you are familiar with WordPress multi-site. WordPress multi-site is a kind of installation of WordPress uh, where with a single installation it's possible to have different separated uh, websites. Only the super admin can create or delete or edit website. Normal user just see a single website. In this case, we can have a single language per website. So some examples of existing plugin. For the one post part per language, we have Qtranslate, which is, as far as I remember, the oldest plugin which did something like this, which probably don't exist anymore. I think exists an evolution which is called Qtranslatex or something like that. For the one post per language, we have WPML, that's probably the most popular solution right now, and Polylang. Finally, for the one site per language, we have Multilingual Press, which full disclosure is developed by inside. So we can go to the pros and the cons of the various solution. So for the pros, uh, the first approach as the pro, this, the plugin can be quite simple to do this. And to install it and configure it, you don't need that skill. You just install and it works. But we have quite a lot of problem with this approach because we need to uh, do things with the content and the content at the screen that are not normal for the WordPress API or for the WordPress kind of work. Uh, for example, we have to split the content using separator. Imagine to be a content and good luck to make this work with Gutenberg, for example. That's not gonna work. And this makes also compatibility, forward compatibility of the plugin quite problematic. I remember that Qtus Late, the, plugin, the oldest plugin that uses this approach, pretty much broke at every new version of WordPress. I remember in the website there was a map between plugin version and WordPress version, and you had to use a specific version for a specific version of WordPress. This is gonna work for enterprises, of course. And another problem is content filtering, because imagine you want to see uh, some post in a specific category in a specific language. Maybe there exists thousands of posts in that specific category, but known as the translation you are looking for, which means you have to query all the thousands of posts, look to them to find out that there is no translation, so you have to say to the user, sorry, no translation for you, which is kind of bad, doesn't play well with cache, so it's not really suitable for enterprises. And probably the worst thing is the vendor lock-in, because if you use this plugin uh, to enter content, so all the posts are filled with many languages, as soon as you remove the plugin, all the content, all the language appear in each post. And this is kind of, you, uh, the website is pretty much uh, connected for life <laughs> with, the, with the plugin, and it's like a divorce if you want to get rid of it because it takes time and money. Um, finally, we have also a limited editorial workflow because, as you know, WordPress only allows one person to edit the post. 
may, I've seen, and they've worked on a uh, website with 40 different languages. Imagine 40 different editors that want to edit the post, and they have to wait one for another. This is something that is going to work in enterprises. So let's go to the second approach. The second approach is one post per language. The pros are pretty much the same, uh, the pro. Uh, maybe it's easier to integrate, so for other plugins to extend. And this is one of the reasons why uh, plugins using this approach are popular, just one of the reasons. Uh, and by using this approach, we have less issues. For sure. I remember that uh, when I was using Qtranslate and then I was using WPML, WPML was like, oh, wow, this works very well. Because it was right, an improvement uh, compared to the previous approach. Uh, but still, we have problems. Uh, we have to use a custom API to get translation because we cannot use WordPress fun functionality to get translation because the posts are connected in we don't know, uh, some custom tables or any way. Uh, and we have big issues on performance. Because if the po when we query post, for example, one specific category, the plugin has to filter, has to intercept the query, has to change the query to only filter the, the posts in the language we are interested to, which means that each and every query in the website has to be filtered. This is a main problem with performance. And um, also doesn't play well with cache. And this is another reason why this is not good for enterprises, not good for a website with high traffic. And again, we have vendor lock-in. Normally, when you use a plugin that uses this approach, and then you uninstall the plugin, either you see all the posts in all the languages, or you only see posts in one language. Which means that, yeah, it's a bit simpler to get rid of the plugin, but still, it's a vendor lock-in. And still, we have editorial workflow problem. Because normally, a uh, company that wants multi-language uh, website, normally they have different editors. So it makes sense to have uh, people who have different capability in different websites that can edit posts together. This is something that is not possible if we use this approach. Finally, we have the one site per language approach. The pros of this approach are that it has no any of the cons that other approach has. Uh, in fact, because it's multi-site, every website is isolated from the others. So uh, when you are in the English website, you just see the English posts. In the Italian website, you just see the Italian posts. So the plugin has nothing to filter, nothing to change the query. It just works. We don't need to change anything in the UI of the WordPress, because the editor that wants to edit the English post just log in and edit the post. No problem. There will be maybe a Metabox or a Gutenberg module to connect posts together. But yeah, it just works. And there, are, there is no custom API. The English post is in English. The Italian post is in Italian. There is no custom API to extract translation. Mm -hmm. And finally, we have no vendor lock-in. This is a very important point for enterprises. Because when you use this plugin to uh, translate post, in the moment you uninstall the plugin, nothing changed in the front end. The English website still show the English post. The Italian website still show the Italian uh, post and so on. So it, you on the front end just don't not notice that the plugin is missing. What are the cons? Well, for the average WordPress user, the cons is the fact that it requires multi-site. Many people don't even know what multi-site is. And to get started with multi-site, you need to add the configuration. You need to change the wp-config file and so on. You need to change the, HT, um, the configuration of the web server. So really, it probably needs someone who is skilled technically or better a developer. But this is not a problem for enterprises. 
enterprise normally hire people, hire developer, hire agency, hire a uh, VIP partner agency to build the websites. So this agency know how to install uh, multi-site. This agency know how to configure the plugin. So basically there are really no cons in this plugin. Of course, the target is not the average WordPress. It's not the single blogger. But for enterprises, our experience, and we use this plugin since a few years now for big enterprises and for websites that have 40 and more languages. So we have the experience that this is really the only suitable approach for enterprises. And while we are here, I can say that we uh, just released the latest version of this plugin, which is already available on multilingualpress.org and will be soon also available on uh, WooCommerce Marketplace very soon. So yeah, if you want to try, <laughs> if you want to ask me a technical question about it, just do it. And there are also other people from inside. You can ask them uh, about sales or anything non-technical. So this is all for me. So if you have questions, 